Hello Vinyl community. I hope you are great. I hope you are fantastic. So I thought let's do it a little bit differently today and change the venue. So we are here outside uh, our apartment. Um, but uh, it's, it's raining outside right now. But uh, it's dry here because we are still under the roof. And uh, behind me you can see my uh, bouldering wall that I've built last December, January and uh, that I regularly use almost um, every day actually. And uh, yeah, the size of the whole thing is... Uh, I had to look it up because uh, I assume that uh, most of the people watching this video are probably from a region that does not use the metric system. The horizontal size of the whole thing is 6.5 feet and the height is 10 feet. And I needed it to be that large because uh, I'm 6 feet 2, so uh, if this was only kind of the size of a door or something it would have been a little boring. So uh, this is actually, as you can see, reasonably high and uh, allows me to do all kind of interesting climbing moves. Um, I had started this, this whole thing. I mean, you may wonder why, because uh, am I not a little too old for stuff like that? But uh, I actually suffered from a lot of back pain and this is kind of the cure and um, it works perfectly, to be honest. So this is really a great thing. So, um, but let's talk about records, because that's why you came here, right? So, a um, lot of stuff to go through. Most of it is kind of jazzy. Some of it is pure jazz uh, and some of it is kind of jazzy. Um, let's begin with uh, this record here. This is uh, the Pacific Memories EP by Phenomenon. Um, it doesn't look like much. This is one of those uh, records that have a rather generic sleeve. Um, Phenomenon uh, was around like kind of 20 years ago um, in the glorious days of Deep House and uh, Acid Jazz and uh, their music is rather pleasant to listen. Um, it's kind of a slightly atmospheric ambient type of kind of soft techno, soft house or deep techno, however you want to call it, um, but quite melodic, intricate and uh, nice to listen to. Oh, and by the way, I just made a needle drop video about exactly that record, so uh, if you want to hear how this band sounds, just look it up. Um, in the same video, I looked into this band here. This is Insect O and uh, the album Atacama. This is only two years old, uh, but kind of a similar sound, a little more minimalistic, kind of less playful compared with Phenomenon, but uh, on the same level as far as this kind of a mysterious laid back atmosphere goes. Um, again, very pleasant to listen to. Um, it comes in this really nice gatefold sleeve. Um, this is basically a one-man project by a guy from Dresden, Saxonia, in, here in Germany. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice atmospheric uh, kind of deep techno album. Something you can listen to while working, for example. It's a really pleasant background. Uh, it's, it's just not aggressive enough to be a kind of a typical dance floor record. But uh, I also got me here the Atacama remixes. So this is kind of complementary to, to this album. Uh, it's like an EP with four tracks on it. Uh, remixed by different DJs. So this is a little more, kind of a little more aggressive actually. Um, this album here is truly wonderful and I, again, I also did a uh, needle drop in my YouTube channel with uh, two tracks from here. Um, this is Suburban Exotica by Compra Oro. Uh, wonderful uh, jazz funk music with a lot of kind of Afrobeat elements, very cinematic and great musicianship. Wonderful kind of marimba playing 
which you don't hear a lot. Uh, there is a lot of uh, great kind of surf rock, psychedelic guitar playing going on there, wonderful keyboards and an excellent drummer. The drumming is outstanding. Um, so um, this is a great example of uh, kind of a contemporary jazz funk music. Uh, the band comes from Belgium. I call this type of uh, music uh, psychedelic jazz funk, which is not a real thing, but uh, it's a kind of a label I started to give to all those <laughs> bands that have a particular contemporary sound. So this is a wonderful record. And uh, right now one of my favorite. Um, so I've been listening to this quite a lot. Uh, great record from Belgium. And uh, definitely a recommendation if you like kind of a playful jazz fusion or jazz funk. So uh, let me change the setting here a little bit because uh, while it is quite uh, exciting to have all these shadows thrown into my face, um, it's uh, certainly less pleasant uh, when these shadows are falling on the records I'm showing. It's actually a little bit annoying probably, but uh, I think I can change that. Wait a second. So here I am again. Now the shadows are gone. The angle is now a little bit different, but uh, I think it's fine. So the next album I'm going to show you has just been released yesterday. And uh, so this is brand new. And this is uh, a record that comes from Bavaria in Germany. And uh, the artist is called Microtom. And the record is called Ratoratio. And uh, this is a wonderful album and a very pleasant listen. Very innovative, very interesting. Uh, but at the same time, um, we have kind of reached a point in musical history where categorizations and genres are somewhat breaking down, which is probably not a bad thing, but um, I certainly grew up in a very different atmosphere. When I grew up, uh, as far as music went, uh, it was always very important to be able to define under which flag a particular album belongs, uh, what kind of genre it is. and. Um, you kind of had a tendency to be very judgmental in, in those terms. This is something that doesn't mean anything anymore in this time and age, I believe. And this is a great example. So to some extent, this is probably a album that is somewhat uh, a dubstep album, maybe. Maybe it is more of a ambient album to some degree. What I certainly hear are certain aspects of what one could call fourth world music in the same way that John Hassel had coined this term. So it has a somewhat a kind of an ethnographic uh, orientation in some parts, um, but at the same time uh, without putting a pin uh, into the music. And uh, so in a sense, it remains uh, undetermined. Um, so. Um, the other thing that is really cool about this record is that while it is uh, a album that certainly stands in this now long and deep tradition of electronic uh, kind of club oriented music, uh, in this case here no two tracks sound alike uh, and that's pretty cool because it's a very versatile record. I think the other strong aspect of this album lies in the fact that uh, the artist behind it which is Tom Simonetti, which uh, is a member of the band Das Hobos, who just did a really great album two years ago that I've also had shown on VC. Um, so he himself is a musician and a drummer and percussionist. So this brings something to the, to the table here and kind of expands on the idea of a purely electronic album. And uh, so it kind of breathes in its own way, this record. It's very interesting. Um, so uh, it has a rather minimalistic character to some extent. It is a little experimental, I think. There is something slightly conceptual about it, even though I can't exactly point out what. Um, it kind of feels. It kind of feels like it maybe was a soundtrack to a kind of an exhibition or installation or something like that. I don't know. But it's a pretty interesting album and this would actually be pretty great to make a little needle drop session with this record here. So um, check it out if you are interested in kind of what's going on in the contemporary posed dubstep electronica world. This record could interest you. 
And also, again, this is the type of record, uh, and that's something I particularly like, where you kind of decide for yourself uh, what level of attention and involvement as a listener uh, you bring, meaning that the same type of music can be listened basically in two ways. You can pay very close attention and kind of enjoy all the tricks and all the intricacies and all, all the little eccentric moments, like using the sound of ping pong balls as a percussive element. And uh, on the other hand, this album works as well as a kind of a acoustic wallpaper inside your room or your working space, uh, just to kind of in the background, just uh, lending the room a certain type of mood. So a super interesting record and uh, check it out. Let's get to some pure jazz. This is Source by Nubia Garcia. Nubia Garcia is a saxophone player and she has a quite outstanding band uh, playing with her. Um, particularly interesting here is the drummer and the bass player. Um, I think the, the bass player is um, playing a upright bass, but it sounds very electric. So I, I think this is a kind of a kind of a modern, uh, not an acoustic double bass, but uh, one of one of these uh, kind of modern uh, digital one. Kind of like uh, Tony Levin plays a lot. Uh, at least it sounds like that. I mean, I, I could be completely wrong. I mean, this time and age, a lot of stuff is possible in the way how you can treat sound and modulate it. And the drummer, the drummer is completely insane. So um, I guess if this uh, was a drummer that is not as good, it might be almost a little annoying because a lot of this music has a kind of a almost kind of laid back, uh, cool jazz demeanor while the drummer is at it the entire time. Um, but he's really that good, so he can really afford to elevate this music with uh, all this incredibly technical drumming. And uh, the bass player is very much locked in, so this is an amazing unit. Um, and they kind of give this band uh, very kind of strong dynamic. So this is a kind of a cool jazz album uh, with uh, their original material. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of kind of envelope pushing going on, a lot of interesting ideas. Uh, it's not a jazz album that particularly tries to sound retro in any way. Uh, it's actually very contemporary and uh, at the same time very smooth and uh, quite a lovely listen. So. Uh, Let's source by Nubia Garcia. And it comes in a nice gatefold sleeve. It's basically a double album. But what isn't in these what isn't these days? Now, fun fact, I have two jazz records here that both have basically the same title. The one I showed you right now was uh, Source by Nubia Garcia and this is The Source by the wonderful Tony Allen. Now Tony Allen of course uh, well known as the drum god of Afrobeat but uh, this is a pure jazz album which is truly wonderful. This is an incredibly sounding record and I kind of like the way it is mixed. Um, you, if you listen to it, you kind of feel like you are sitting in the middle of the room and this band is around you and uh, you could kind of stretch your arm and probably already touch uh, Tony Allen's cymbals. And by the way, cymbals, he's such an incredible cymbal player. Kind of, you know, right cymbal and stuff like that. Very, very beautiful vibe, very wonderful feel in his wrist. Really enjoyable. And those are great songs. Um, it's a music uh, that he uh, mostly wrote together with a sax player called Jan Jankilevich. This was entirely recorded in uh, France um, in a city called Vitaneuse and uh, later mixed down in, uh, in, in Paris. So this is a French group that he plays with, uh, with Jean Fideri on keyboards and piano. 
Um, and uh, this is a brilliant record. Right now, this is one of my favorite jazz albums, actually. Um, great sound, cool, energetic music, uh, a wonderful journey. Um, and uh, this came out on uh, Blue Note, by the way. Uh, and yeah, this is from 2000, uh, oh no, 2017. So this is The Source by Tony Allen. Uh, great, uh, kind of cool jazz album. Uh, with uh, beautiful, innovative drumming and uh, overall a fantastic vibe. Now this record here has been shown a lot on VC, um, but uh, I finally got it and um, it's um, Rejoice by Tony Allen and Hugh Masakela. Great vibrant jazz album uh, with a touch of Afrobeat and uh, quite a strong African vibe. Hugh Masakela, of course, was a flugelhorn player from South Africa. And uh, yeah, it's a great album. Very vibrant music uh, with a kind of strong African identity. And um, Mutale Chashi is playing bass here on two tracks, uh, which who, who is the, the bass player from a band called Kokoroko, who is quite a wonderful kind of Afrobeat group. And uh, yeah, I'm not blathering about it too much because, uh, as I said, this was shown on VC quite a lot and I think a lot of people have this record. And uh, certainly a kind of a goodbye album uh, from Tony Allen. Um, but uh, yeah, at this point in time, uh, both artists have already passed away. Um, yeah, um, and uh, one more time, Tony Allen. Well, this is a very different story. This is a 10-inch EP called Tomorrow Comes the Harvest by Tony Allen and Jeff Mills. So uh, what happens uh, when uh, the king of the Afrobeat drumming uh, meets the king of the techno rave? <laughs> and uh, it's probably not what you would expect. Um, the naive mind would probably assume that uh, they just recorded uh, Tony Allen for an hour and then cut his playing into a huge pile of samples and then just threw some techno on it and looked what sticks, etc. But it's not like that. It's just very, it's actually a very beautifully constructed uh, mini album where Tony Allen's playing is definitely continuous this is no just uh, those are not just snippets and snippets and samples put together this is uh, him playing to a musical structure that has been composed beforehand so um, again you have uh, Jean Fidery on keyboards here now the entire record was mixed down by Francois Kevorkian a little funny Kevorkian story so I posted this on Instagram and I put like some hashtags under my posting, uh, like a uh, Jeff Mill hashtag and <laughs> Tony Allen hashtag and jazz hashtag or whatever. And uh, Francois Kevorkian came, uh, visited my, my posting and wrote under and wrote in the comments, um, yeah, it's so nice you like this album, but um, um, wouldn't it be also nice if you would have included my name in the hashtags? <laughs> Which I thought is really odd, but then I thought about it for a minute or so and I realized that's uh, why uh, famous people are famous, right? And that's why successful people are successful, because they never give an inch. People like me are never successful and never famous. Uh, um, I can do whatever I want in my YouTube channel. I will never get over a certain level of uh, subscriptions because I'm just not constantly plugging myself at any given minute and um, so I'm not criticizing it I was really kind of amused by it <laughs> that Francois Kevorkian would kind of react to my posting um, but uh, as someone who is basically kind of influencing the remix culture for the last 40 years but anyway this is a wonderful mini LP or EP and uh, quite an interesting uh, experiment between uh, 
analog drumming and uh, electronic sound design and it's very intriguing and uh, quite a wonderful find so uh, if this is something that interests you check it out um, tomorrow comes the harvest tony allen jeff mills jean fideri on keyboards francois kevorkian engineering so what else do we have here uh yeah i have one two more records here to show you um, those are records that I have had for many years, but I haven't listened to them for quite a while and I uh, kind of returned back to this type of music. This is the, um, the, the debut album by Phase Action called Plants and Designs. Um, don't ask me if it's this way around or this way around. Um, this is an interesting, uh, quite intricate take on uh, down tempo. Uh, with all kind of uh, playful elements, uh, phase action always tried to not only venture into Latin music, for example, but uh, they love to play with orchestras and timpani and always uh, using all kind of huge and cinematic elements in their music. So it's always great fun to listen to it. Um, I don't, I did not listen for to this type of music for quite a while but i think i'm slightly returning now a little bit uh, into the world of future jazz and uh, down tempo and uh, this here um, moving cities was their second album by phase action and it's kind of following uh, the same style the same trend uh, some great uh, kind of Brazilian sounding or Latin sounding songs on here but also at the same time uh, a lot of it kind of sounds like something you would uh, expect in a in a typical spy movie from the 60s so it has this kind of a cinematic dimension to dimension to it somewhere between kind of funky jazz and uh, kind of orchestral music uh, so they were really good at that so this is uh, Moving Cities by Phase Action. And finally, one more thing. This again just came out probably a few weeks ago. This is the Rocket EP by a project called Tessero. Um, this is a French uh, electronic uh, outfit. Uh, the style of this music, I would probably call it French House. It is very much this type of vibe that uh, the French house recordings had in the late 90s. So um, it's really cool sounding uh, kind of a dance floor music uh, that at the same time of course feel feels somewhat almost retro at this point in time, almost kind of derivative um, just because uh, stuff like techno and house it's it's been around for such a long time that uh, if someone makes a kind of a bona fide uh, techno record that is not a kind of avant-gardistic uh, experimental kind of post dubstep album uh, you are almost surprised because it because it actually suddenly almost sounds kind of old-fashioned but in a good way this is the type of music that you can imagine when the hitman enters the disco club and goes across the dance floor filled with dancing people to kill the mafia boss on the other side of the room. This is the type of music that's coming out of the loudspeakers in a movie scene like that. So um, it's actually a pretty nice EP and I quite enjoy it. So I'm almost done. Now one more thing to close it up. I finally got me the music for installations by Brian Eno. Um, this is a box that includes, um, how many actually? It's six CDs inside. Um, this came out a few years ago, I think two or three years ago, and it was actually a, a, a uh, release that was pretty much talked about, I think, uh, in certain ambient-oriented circles, uh, a little bit on the VC, I think, as well, because this was also released as a giant vinyl box with a lot of records and quite beautifully looking, of course. Um, let me open this. I mean, it has this really nice booklet with a lot of uh, text uh, 
um, by Brian Eno. Now, last week I finally got my reading glasses, so uh, it's not such a pain in the butt anymore to read booklets like that. Um, but interesting thing, um, this is one of the cases where I just meditated over the whole thing and just made my decision to buy it um, on CD. This was a conscious decision. Because uh, this is something I always do when stuff comes particular to ambient. I kind of think that a lot of ambient just does not lend itself that well to the vinyl format, honestly. And yes, I have all the kind of classic Eno albums on vinyl, but actually I also have them on CD and me having them on vinyl, it's actually a little bit of snobbery, uh, to be honest, just this wish to own it. but. Um, if I have the choice to listen to Ambient 4 on land by Brian Eno, I most certainly will not uh, listen to it on vinyl. I will most definitely um, listen to the CD or to my MP3. And with this uh, huge amount of music on, in this box, I just... Uh, let's put aside this rather horrendous price for the entire vinyl box but it's just it's just a little too much i mean you get just this box full of uh, vinyl discs and uh, you have these giant tracks and um, i don't know it's just it's the type of music that uh, for me at least uh, i certainly feel better to have it on cd uh, there are certain albums that uh, really feel better for me when they're on cd so um, it's, it's usually the type of music i look at the music and just think for a second um, does it feel better more natural for me to listen to this music through a needle or does it actually feel better uh, to listen to it through a kind of digital medium so that's it we are done here and uh, now i will turn my attention to the art of bouldering um, and uh, hope you're fine that you have a great day right now it's sunday so uh, i hope you are kind of enjoying your weekend uh, and uh, stay healthy stay safe um, the pandemic is not entirely over um, i already had one vaccination in three weeks uh, the second round is due and um, yeah we'll see how life continues then so um, i hope you've uh, seen some interesting albums something that uh, could interest you to sample it. Uh, uh, you find all this stuff online anyway these days, uh, but uh, I probably will put a little list of the album's names uh, in my um, video description under the video. I think that can be quite useful. So uh, have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>